I think of feminism and I think of feminism as a kind of political and theoretical project that is dedicated to both understanding and challenging oppression on the basis of gender, sexuality, race, class, nationality, you know, ability, disability, we can sort of have this endless list, right? And so because I start from feminism, like my understanding of feminism like that, I see my work as being part of that political and academic project. Uh, we can think about it through um, kind of 1970s um, anti trans feminist discourse, right, which happened in terms of um, feminist organizing, but also academics, right, um, sort of saying, you know, and this often happened with trans women, right, that trans women weren't women, or they were impersonating men, or they were agents of patriarchy, right, so there's a sort of um, history of, of transphobia within certain threads of feminist theorizing and political organizing that you can still see echoes of today, right? So, but we can sort of see that happening in the 70s with, um, with the kind of women's liberation movement and then with the gay and lesbian and sort of beginnings of trans liberation movements. Um, so that's one kind of thread that we could think about. But we could also think about the, the sort of emergence of the field of trans feminism, right? Which is sometimes trans sort of slash feminism or trans dash feminism or putting them together and trying to understand how, that there that there's complementariness between these two political and academic projects, right? And that um, uh, trans as a as a category can be legible and can make sense within um, feminist theorizing, right? And that trans folks also experience gendered and sexual oppression, right? Maybe in different ways than like women, the sort of traditional political subject within feminism, um, but in ways that that can help us understand how things like patriarchy work or white supremacy work, right, or heterosexism works. I'm looking at asylum law, um, marriage and citizenship uh, questions, and then immigration detention, thinking about basically how the state um, classifies transgender immigrants in those different areas of the law and what that can tell us about um, who gets legible as transgender and who doesn't, and then thinking about kind of how rights and citizenship are distributed amongst those different legal regimes. So, um, and I come, I came to that and I continue to be invested in that research um, from a social justice perspective of thinking about um, the ways that um, violence and marginalization on the basis of gender, sexuality, and race, in, in this case, and then immigration status kind of shape people's experiences, right? Right. I mean, I think there's ways that um, academic scholarship can be mobilized to help support um, and work, you know, in coalition with social justice movements, but it's different, right? So, like, I'm doing kind of abstract theorization about, like, how the state understands these different categories of, of, of um, immigrants, right? Um, but I do think that that helps us in terms of um, the like sort of on the ground implications of that. I think it, if you're interested, if, uh, as I am, if I'm interested in questions of state violence, to understand the kind of logics of the state and the classificatory schemes that it uses, um, is a way to understand like how the state works, right? And gives can give us a, a different framework for thinking about, or a helpful framework for thinking about. Then how do you challenge those forms of state violence, right? So because I see my project as being kind of a top-down analysis, not an ethnography. Um, I think another way that I can help sort of these social justice movements, right, around um, around the prison industrial complex, immigration detention, you know, trans sort of rights more generally, is to also then his historicize and amplify the work of organizations that are doing this activism, right? So the work that a lot of trans immigrant justice organizations are doing. I think is really amazing because they're bridging, they're making coalitions between sort of trans rights and LGBT rights, kind of um, organizing and then immigrant justice organizing, right? And mm -hmm. so I think that that's an amazing model to sort of think about, right? But also then to use that to sort of reflect back in terms of academic work on these different topics and thinking about the connections that academics could make, right? To really understand like how does state oppression or state violence work? So, okay. That's what I'll say about